In this video I want to show you how to implement mentioning functionality inside your comments if you are implementing your project by using React Framework. So what does mention feature means? Typically you can see this feature for example on Twitter or on YouTube, you have a text area, you can just type something, then at some point you are writing ad and you have a list of users. And from this list you can select a user and then this user will be mentioned when you will send this tweet or add this reply. And actually it might look like a small feature, but it is not. This is why here I opened a code pen with the example of such implementation. As you can see here we have HTML, this is almost nothing, we have just a little bit of CSS and this is our JavaScript. This is lots of code to implement such feature. And actually positioning and opening this select is not that easy, which actually means we can implement it on our own, it will take quite significant amount of time and you will for sure make quite a lot of bugs with positioning inside. This is why for production project I don't recommend you to bother with custom implementation, there is a really nice library for React that you can use instead. And I'm talking here about the library which is called React Mentions. And actually it can do lots of different stuff and I tested this library quite a lot. This is why in this video I want to show you how to use this library and what are most common use cases. The first step here will be to create a React project. And here I already generated a create React app, this is where we can start working. And our first step will be to jump to the console and write yarn add react mentions or npm install react mentions. This you can see here directly in the documentation. Now let's create our new component mentions. This is why here in source I will create a new file which is called mentions.js. And actually as you can see here I don't only have index.js and depth.js, I also have predefined two files with styling and I will talk about them a little bit later. So here is our new component mentions and we can simply write export default and here it is called mentions and on the top we must create this as a stateless function. So we just have our mentions, we don't have anything inside and we can simply return our markup. So here we can write a return with some div inside and maybe some text. But actually inside we want to throw mentions input. And this is exactly a component which is coming from this library. This is why on the top we must write import, mentions input, from and here will be react mentions. Now here we can close our mentions input and inside we want to provide one more component and it will be mention. And this component we also must import here on the top. Now we must inject this component inside our app.js, this is why here on the top we can import our mentions component from our new component mentions and here under h1 we can just write mentions. Let's check what we have in browser. As you can see here I am reloading the page and we just get a single input without any information. Because actually we are missing quite a lot of stuff and first of all we are missing styling. This is why here is default styling for this library. And as you can see I have here two files, default style.js, default mention style and default style. And if we will jump inside default mention style, it is really small, it is just a background color. This is why here inside our mentions, here we have our mention. And we want to apply here this style. So we can simply import default mention style and it will be auto imported from default mention style file. And here I will provide it inside our mention. And now we must do exactly the same but with the second file. And this is default style for the mentions input. And as you can see here we have quite a lot, we have control, multi-line, single line styles and suggestion styles. Which actually means you can style these components quite extensively. This is why here I want to import default style from default style and here inside our mentions input we are providing our style default style. Our next step will be to provide some data for the mention list. This is why here on the top I can create just predefined array of users. And here we must have objects with specific keys. And this keys is first of all id, for example jack, and here will be display. Actually this is the display name, for example jack with the capital J. And here we can copy paste this object once again and add a second user. And for example let's have here ad john and then the display name will be also john. 
Now inside our mentioned component we can provide the field data. And inside data we are throwing an array of our users, which will be used for the list of mentions. And last but not least is we must bind our state with the value to this component, which actually means here inside our component we must create a state for the value. For example here we can use useState hook and write value and set value. And here we will use useState hook and inside we are providing an empty string. And obviously we must import here useState hook on the top. So our state is available for us, we must now provide it as a value inside mentions input. And it is a must because here we want to provide a value, but we also want a change. This is why here we have on change event, and here we can get access to our event, and we can call here set value that we just created and provide inside event.target.value. This is the value of the input. So this is the complete basics how you will implement such component. Let's check this out. I'm reloading the page here where I get a nice text area. Now we can type here something just like a normal text area and here I put add and we're getting a nice autocomplete of our two users. I'm hitting here enter and we're getting undefined, which means I made some typo somewhere and here I already see it, it is ID and display and here on the bottom also. Let's check it now, I will just type something, hit add and here is our check. And as you can see in this case, it is highlighted correctly. And now we know that this is our mention. But now let's have a look what we have inside our set value, which actually means here I want to just console log our value so we can check what we are getting inside. Let's reload the page, type something. As you can see, this is our value. This is just a string inside the console. But now I'm hitting add and choosing a user. And this is how our string is looking. This is value, then our string, space, and here we have such notation, add, then square brackets with the display, and then round brackets. And this is essentially our ID. This is what we're getting here on the top. Why do we have such structure at all? Because at some point of time, you want to send this information to the backend to save inside database and also to parse a user, which was mentioned, and send him an email. This is why this structure is super easy for the backend to parse, because here we have this add, then here round brackets, and we can simply parse ID from this line. Additionally, here we want to improve our input a little bit. So what I want to do, I want to provide here first of all a placeholder. And we can simply provide here a string, mention, people, using, and here we want to put a net sign. And the second thing that I want to write here is suggestion list label. And it is called A11, Y, and then suggestions list label. And inside we want to provide a string, for example, suggested, mentions. Let's check how it looks like. I'm reloading the page here. And as you can see now, we're getting a nice placeholder at the beginning. As you can already see, this library covers our needs. But what can we do if we need not a text area, but just a single line input? And this is super easy to implement. We simply must put here an additional property, which is called single line. And this is it. Now we're reloading a page and as you can see we're getting here an input and not a text area. And it is working in exactly the same way. This is just a text. Now here we put add and we see now our list and we can use an autocomplete. Another important question here is if we can to make asynchronous calls to get data for the list. And yes, this is really easy. This is why what I want to do here, I want to create an asynchronous function which will get our data users in the same format. And I don't want to make an API call here, I want just to simulate it to show how it works. This is why what we need here, we want to create our new function fetch users. And here we first of all are getting query and secondly callback. Why it is like that? Because essentially what we are doing here with add, we are typing something. And if this list is asynchronous, it means it is really large. Which actually means here we want to type something like foo, and this is our query. And then we will make an API call with query string foo. Our second parameter is callback. We are calling it when we are ready with our data. This is why here inside we can do whatever any asynchronous logic, and then at the end we simply call our callback. So what you typically want to write is first of all, if we don't have a query, which means it is empty, then we don't need to fetch anything, we simply make return. 
After this we can write set timeout with 2 seconds just to simulate an asynchronous call. What do we want to do inside our set timeout? We want to filter our users here on the top because essentially you want to filter your users in the database by this query. And here for this I can write filtered users. And here we are calling our users array with filter where I get an access to every single user. And here we can use user.display dot we are converting it to lowercase and after this we want to check if it includes our query that we have in this function. After we successfully got our filtered users from the backend we want to call our callback and provide our filtered users inside. And most importantly you must send this data in the same format with ID and display. And our last step here will be to use this fetch users function. This is why here inside data instead of our array we can just write fetch users and this will be a function. Now let's check if it's working. I'm typing here something I'm writing at John and we don't get our list and I already can see what is the problem. Here we must write if not query then we are making return. Let's reload the page and try again. I'm typing here and we have here John. And we are getting autocomplete into seconds when our set timeout is being called. Here we filtered our user or essentially you will use here an API call. And then we are calling just a callback with filtered user. And here we are using this select exactly like we did previously. And the last question here that you want for sure to ask what you should do on your backend with this specific string. Yes, we are getting this string from the library, but this library doesn't pass for us this ID's back. And actually here I don't want to go really deep inside regular expressions. But this is exactly what you will use to parse strings. This is why here I just want to show you as a single liner an example how you can parse such strings by using regular expressions. This is why here I can copy paste this exact line and just put it as a string. After this I will call match with such regular expression. And as you can see this regular expression is getting exactly the ID of our mention here. And this is John. And this is the only thing that you need inside your backend. Because actually you don't care about display name at all. You just need an ID of a user. You will find this ID in the database and send an email or mention in. Also, if you're interested to see my video inside React how we implemented nested comments feature, make sure to check this video also.